Welcome back to Monroe Live, everybody. I'm Corey, and this is Adam. Hey. And we're going to dig right in and let you know a couple of the things that we found. So first of all, both of these units, the Sub-Zero and the Frigidaire, showed up damaged. In episode one, we showed what those damage marks were. There was a dent here and some bent sheet metal up here. Uh, we had our team weigh the packaging uh, for both the Frigidaire and the Sub-Zero, and what were the weights on those, Adam? Uh, the Sub-Zero was 26 kilograms, and the Frigidaire was 5.4. So 500% more packaging weight on the Sub-Zero, but it didn't make a yes, difference. And still the same result, useless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're going to dig into what we found while assembling these handles. So Adam, you want to take us through assembling these handles? Yeah. So they uh, provided a tool in the uh, packaging, a little Allen wrench, which is nice because, you know, not everyone has Allen keys. And they all came packaged in a bag inside of a styrofoam container, you know, with some cardboard packaging and you just assemble it with the key. But what's cool about the key that we noticed is that the assembly side is not coated, but the, the spinning side or the handling side is coated with rubber so that when you tighten these, you don't scratch your stainless steel door. And we thought that was really thoughtful, a uh, really nice touch for you know, the design of the, of the assembly. So it allows a user to fairly comfortably assemble their handles without marring the stainless finish of their doors. So the other thing we noticed was the finish of the, the handles. They've kind of got, a lot of fridges are defined, especially stainless steel fridges, they define their looks or their industrial design by their handles. So KitchenAid handles are a knurled you know, steel or aluminum rod and it's got heft and they have red uh, nuts on the side of it, whereas Frigidaire has chosen their design accents to be the same brushed stainless look as their door but they polished the inside edge to a high gloss, which is kind of, it, we, you know, we think it looks nice and it also kind of feels good on the hand, like a cold metal feel on your thumb when you grab the door. The other thing that this, you know, specific industrial design does is it hides color mismatching between the stainless from the handle to the door panel. So when you batch all of these materials together in your production, you want the doors to match each other so you don't have color mismatches. But what this sort of finish on the handle does is it allows you to have slight color differentiation between the manufacturing process of this and the brushed stainless panels of the doors. So it's not as important because you, instead of gravitating to the fact that the color is mismatched, you're looking at the design accents. So it's a, it's a clever way for industrial designers to allow manufacturing to have a little bit of play and a little bit of slop. And I, we, we think that's pretty badass. Now let's move on to some of the shelving. Um, one thing we were drawn to was this butter shelf or butter container. Um, we noticed that it just has this beautiful sound when yeah, it closes. <laughs> this butter container is pretty awesome. So this edging right here is metal. There's a small magnet in the bottom portion of the seal just like you would have a magnet in your door seal right here. So this is where we see a differentiation between the Frigidaire with this beautiful door. I mean, I want this on my desk to hold knickknacks. <laughs> There's also a mold-in, uh, I don't wanna say a mold-in soft feature right here that is gonna interface with these slots. This will keep it from squeaking or, or rattling. And there's also a fine level of adjustment right here. Uh, we don't get that same fine level of adjustment on the Frigidaire. So Adam, you want to take them through the Frigidaire? Yeah, the Frigidaire is a much simpler assembly. Uh, you have basically one, two, three, four parts, as opposed to the one, two, two. that's a, a steel stamping. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you count all the separate pieces of the seal that are that are uh, bonded together. And is there a magnet in there? So. I counted that. Okay, so there's no magnet in this, but you have actually four or five because you have the, the separate part that is the IMD accented part that it gives you the look of stainless on this. So the part count is much lower. The other thing about this, 
this way, about this plastic butter you know, tray is that when you look at the plastic itself, there are, you can see knit lines in the plastic. Like there you can see where the, the plastic flowed from the gate to and around this hole, you can actually see a knit line. And that's just a relic of the injection molding process. There's one gate on this, so it's harder to manage when you have a hole and plastic flows, you'll get a knit line in the top. We've also noticed other things like witness lines for you know, where tools go together and inserts go together. So you have a core and a cavity or a side action going together here and you have a parting line. And you can see these in this plastic part on this, on the uh, Frigidaire butter tray assembly. And it's, it's very noticeable. Uh, most people won't see that, but it's, it's just something to take note of. Other, other noticeable things about it is that there's a blue hue to that plastic, to that Lexan. And when you compare it to the the green hue of the, of the glass, there's a little bit of a color mismatch. Yeah, on the Sub-Zero, the plastic has a little bit more of a clear view and you don't see so much of the blue coloring because they have white closeouts here on the edge. And there's a lot smaller ejector pins. I don't know if you can get in there. Just on the edge, there's two right here. Those are two edge gates, yes. Yeah, edge gates. And then underneath this metal uh, edge piece, there's most likely some other, other yeah. ones but a much cleaner look on the Sub-Zero. Um, so we're trying to differentiate between this $10,500 machine versus a $2,900 machine. And oftentimes it's small aspects and attributes that you won't actually see to the naked eye. And we're gonna try and point these out. Another thing that Monroe Associates will do, and we're planning on doing this, we're gonna do a full cost analysis. So the amount of tooling needed for all these extra parts and assembly we're gonna do a full bottoms up cost or at least a rough order magnitude cost analysis on this versus that. So any of our clients that are interested in understanding what does it cost for me, for me to have a butter tray like this and what does it cost to have a butter tray like that? And the Sub-Zero is clearly different than the Frigidaire. And as we dig into some of the more mechanical aspects, we think it'll get more interesting as well. Yeah. Put it in there and shut the door on it. it the sound of it is drastically different. Verse. Just sounds like money. It does sound like money because it is money. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing we noticed, these drawers are soft close. This is something you would have on your cabinets if you have high-end cabinets. And on the Frigidaire, I believe they're not quite. They are on a roller. They are on rollers, which is much better than a lot of this segment of fridges. But it's, there's no soft, soft close to it. And it doesn't self-close either, unless you shut the door on it. Yeah. In our first episode, we noticed that there was some interference with this upper closeout panel. Uh, while I was unpacking all of this, I reached up and pushed up on it. I was able to get clearance on this piece so that it can flip up. There is a decent amount of adjustment on the two screws that secure this hinge mechanism to this door. Um, so when this gets installed, there's a ton of adjustment built in. And some of our viewers pointed out that, hey, we were still in the packaging. We should get it on the ground. We got it out of the packaging. It's on the ground. So we'll level this thing out before we, we really lambast any fit and finish issues. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug these things in, but we thought we would test how quickly they chill down. So Adam, you want to grab our two candidate, yeah, bring them in. Alrighty. So put it right in the center, right in the center. Where's yeah. that at? Okay. There we go. So we'll measure, the, we'll measure the temperature of the uh, brewskis or what you want to, whatever you want to call them uh, with a tool that I've used in several aspects of my career. Um, this is a Seek thermal camera. I traded it uh, for a Corvin wine preservation or I traded a Corvin wine preservation system when I worked at Corvin for this device. I've flown to China with it several times to do measure, to do uh, plastic, injection molding 
you know, all kinds of fun things. And I've used this to uh, measure mold temperatures from a distance. It's very accurate. It's pretty cool. And we're going to use it for, uh, you know, measuring the external temperature of these cans before we uh, turn on the fridges and in, what, an hour? About an hour. We'll do an hour. We'll run the fridges for an hour and see how cold the cans get and see what the uh, cooling capacity is of, the, of these uh, fridges com in comparison to each other. Yeah. So this can is reading about 70, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 77. Yeah, 77, 78. Now you want to describe, because the can is very similar in temperature to the ambient air as well as the fridge, you won't see a lot of delta right now. Yeah, the fridge right now is about 76. Let's do this one. So it's one. very similar. This is 77, 76, yeah, about the same. Okay, let's close the doors and Plug them in. Ready? Yep. Okay, now. And let's set the uh, temperature of the fridges to be the same. Mm -hmm. 37? 37. Let's see. I gotta open this up. It's off right now. Nope, yeah, it's off. It says FF zero. Maybe we need to restart this. Oh, power. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was that was pretty cool. There you go. There. 37. So because it was on the inside, we're going to give this one a head start because we couldn't adjust it from the outside. We'll see if that makes a difference. That light was pretty cool. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's well lit up. Yeah, that's a beautiful fridge. It looks a lot more expensive with the lights <laughs> on. All right, everybody, we're back. It's been an hour. So we're going to see the results of the temperatures of these beers in here. varying so if I don't do the reflective part it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit 44 yeah it's pretty nice it's drinkable and that's 57 58 no kidding look at that it's noticeably warmer Come on, Sub-Zero. <laughs> yeah, and up here it says 51 is the temperature right now of the fridge. What does this say? It doesn't really give you a, a, a reading. It just, it's a setting. So let's see here. No. Oh no, that's 37. Yeah, that we set it at 34, right? Set it at 37. Oh, it's that, so it, it's not a, uh, it's not really a readout. Hmm. Well. There is more volume in here, and there's a compressor and a unit just for the fridge and a compressor and a unit just for the freezer. But, but it, still, yeah. from, from startup, it didn't cool down as fast. Yeah, that's... Uh, Interesting. Nice, yeah, it's nice job, Frigidaire. It's pretty awesome. All right, we're going to wrap this episode up. Thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate your patron patronage. And until next time, thanks. See you later, Internet.